About a month and a half ago, I made a video where I talked about the Try Hack Me Advent of Cyber event. This is a great event that Try Hack Me does every year where they have daily challenges all throughout December leading up to Christmas. I ended up completing all the challenges while I had some time off during the holidays, and I actually wanted to go over one of my favorite challenges from the entire event, and that was a game hacking challenge using Frida. I've used Frida a ton when working with mobile applications, and I've made a bunch of videos about that in the past, but I've never actually used Frida that much when working with other types of programs other than mobile apps. And I've also never really looked into game hacking much before either, so this was a kind of new sort of area that I haven't looked into much, but it was also using a tool that I have used a lot. So I thought it was a pretty cool challenge. So for this video, we're going to be looking at task 25, which is the challenge from day 19. And just a reminder, you can go back and try any of these challenges you want, even if you didn't participate in the advent of cyber this year during December when it was ongoing. And you can even go back and look at previous year's events and look at those challenges as well. But for this challenge, we're going to be hacking a game using Frida and try hack me provides us a convenient little VM that contains all the tools that we're going to need, as well as the game that we're going to be hacking. So after we launch our VM, we can find this little directory on our desktop that includes our game that we're going to hack. So to get started, I'm just going to go to that directory and I'm going to launch the game. And now we see we have this little game called Try Unlock Me. And once we're in the game, we can move around with our arrow keys and we have this little purple character and we can go up and talk to this penguin. And when you go through the dialogue with this penguin, it kind of tells you what we're trying to do here. Basically, this is a quote unquote three factor authentication where they have sort of three different checkpoints along the way in this game. And we're going to have to defeat each of these little three challenges inside this game in order to pass the whole challenge. And after we go through all that dialogue from the penguin, it's going to ask us for an OTP. And this is our first challenge. We need to find the OTP in order to get past this first step. And I'm just going to put in something random like one, two, three, four, five. And obviously that is wrong. So we failed this check and we need to find another way to figure out what the pin is. So if we look back at the Try Hack Me page, we see that it actually tells us sort of a hint to get us started. It tells us that we need to look at the libaocgame.so library. And in the real world, when we were working with a real program, we would probably have to do some sort of reverse engineering, maybe with Ghidra or some sort of tool like that in order to find that library that we need to work with. But this kind of just gives us a little bit of a head start so we can go ahead and get started with Frida. So this time we're going to launch the game again, but this time we're using Frida Trace in order to trace all the functions in that libaoc.game library. And once again, it launches this Try Unlock Me game, but this time you can see in the terminal behind it that we are tracing and instrumenting that library in order to see those functions. And once again, I'm going to go up and talk to this penguin, and I'm going to go through the dialogue to get to that OTP and see what happens. So immediately, as soon as I start talking to that penguin this time, we see that this set OTP function was called, and that means that it's most likely setting the OTP that we're going to need to pass this challenge right at runtime while we are talking to the penguin. So if we can do something to sort of capture what is happening with that function at the time that it runs, we might be able to get the OTP that is actually being set. So I'm actually going to go ahead and close the game and I'm going to open up another terminal window. And this time I'm going to go to the handlers directory and then the directory for that library that we just instrumented. And inside that directory, we see four JS files and one of them is the same name as that function that we just saw setting the OTP. So I'm going to open up that file with a text editor. You can use anything you want. In the actual walkthrough from Try Hack Me, they use Visual Studio Code, but we're not going to have to do a whole lot of coding, so I'm just going to use Vim as a very simple text editor. And we see that this code was auto-generated by Frida, and this is just a very simple little skeleton code and kind of lets us sort of mess with this function at runtime. And one little interesting thing to know here, this um, name of this function ends with I, and that means that it's taking an integer as an argument. So that integer is most likely going to be the OTP that we need. So I'm just going to add one line of code under on enter, and this is a log command that's going to show that argument args zero, which is going to be that integer, and I'm going to have to convert it to an int 32, and I'm just going to print that to the console. And hopefully that is going to be the OTP that we need. So once again, I'm just going to run this same command I just ran last time with the free to trace to launch the game. And once again, I'm going to go talk to this penguin. And we see in the terminal behind the game that once again, it ran this function for set OTP. And it also printed out the actual OTP that was set, which in this case is 466290. 
So after I go through all that dialog, it's going to ask me for the OTP, and I'm just going to put in 466-290, and there we go. We get the first flag, and our first checkpoint of this three-part challenge is complete. So now I'm going to just keep on walking and go to the next part of the challenge, and I'm going to come across a second penguin, and this guy is running a little shop here, and when we talk to him... He tells us that the second sort of checkpoint of this challenge is we need to be able to purchase this flag two item, which is a million dollars. And unfortunately, we only have one coin in our wallet, so we can't afford it. But we can go ahead and try anyway and say ID three, hit enter, checking your credit card. You don't have enough money, use the PC to get more coins. And if we look over in the terminal, we see that the validate purchase function was run. So we can go check that out just like we did with the set OTP function and see what we can do with that one. So once again, I'm just going to use Vim to open up that library under the handlers directory for validate purchase. And you'll notice that there are three I's at the end of this function name. So that means that there are three integer arguments for this function. So let's print out all three of these arguments and see what it's actually doing. And maybe we can figure out what all three of these things actually mean. So very similar to what I did in the last example, I just added three log statements, taking all three of those arguments, converting it to an int32, and printing it to the console. And once again, I went to the shop and tried to buy that item, and you see that it printed out three numbers here. Three, which was the ID for that flag, one million, which was the price of that flag, and one, which was the amount of coins that I have in my wallet right now. And we're failing this check because we don't have enough money in our wallet. So we need to be able to either give ourselves more money or we need to change the price of the item we're buying in order so we have enough money in our wallet to buy it. And there are many different ways you could go about solving this challenge. The way that they give in the walkthrough from TryHackMe is they take the argument one, which was the price for that item you're trying to buy, and they set it to pointer zero, which is making it essentially a zero dollar price, meaning you can afford it. I'm going to go about it a slightly different way, but again, there are many different ways you can accomplish this. I'm just going to take args1, which again is the price of that item you're trying to buy, and I'm just going to set it equal to whatever the value is in args2, which was the amount of coins you have in your wallet. So however much money you have, that is now the price of the thing you're trying to buy. So once again, I'm going to talk to that penguin. I'm going to go to the shop and try to buy flag2, ID3 and I'm going to hit enter. And it worked because it thinks that I had the exact right amount of money in my wallet to buy the thing I'm trying to buy, and we get the second flag. So now we've got two of the checkpoints done. We just need to get one more complete, and then we will have completed the entire challenge. And if we keep walking, we run into a third penguin, and when we talk to him, he tells us one more factor to overcome to fully become mayor malware. And when we go through that dialogue, we go through what they call a biometrics check. And it doesn't really matter what the whole background of how that actually works. All you need to really know is that there is this function called check biometrics that is running and we are failing this check. So we need to figure out either how we're going to change how this function works or just change the result. So once again, going back to our handlers directory, I'm going to look at the check biometrics function. And you'll notice this one does not have any I's at the end. That means it is not dealing with integers. Now it is dealing with strings, which are a bit more difficult to deal with. But maybe we don't even need to deal with that. We might not have to deal with on enter this time. Maybe this time we can take a look at on leave and see if we can do something to mess with it when it's actually completed its work instead of doing something when it's actually being generated. So this time, I'm just going to add a log statement to the onLeave function, and I want it to show me what the return value is. So hopefully, this is going to tell me what it's doing when it actually evaluates my biometrics and it actually is sending the result. I want to see what that result looks like. So once again, I go back to the game, talk to the penguin, go through its dialog. So this time, it ran that check biometrics function again, but it also printed out 0x0. So that means that it's doing some sort of work on a biometrics check, and then it's printing out zero. So whenever it evaluated our biometrics, it decided zero was its response, and we can sort of deduce that that zero means false. And it's probably just doing a true or false check. So if we can sort of capture that value that it's returning and flip it from false to true, then we may be able to pass this biometrics check. So once again, we go back to our script, and after we log that return value, we want to actually change that return value as well. 
So I just added one more line in the onLeave function where I took the return value and replaced it with a pointer to one. So because it was zero, which is false, I'm going to change that to one, which is true. And now let's run it again and see what happens. Once again, I go through the dialog with the penguin. This time, it still printed out the 0x0 because we still had that log function in there, but after it logged it, it actually changed it, so it actually is going to say that we passed the check. And you can see in the dialog that the penguin is kind of confused because we didn't actually do anything to pass the biometrics check. All we did was capture that incorrect response that said false and flip it to true, and now all of a sudden we passed the biometric check. And now because we passed that biometrics check, we had the third flag and we have solved the entire challenge. So that was the game hacking challenge from the Try Hack Me Advent of Cyber event from 2024. It was probably my favorite challenge from the entire event. So I just wanted to go over it with you and I just thought it was really cool because I use Frida all the time, but I haven't really used it in that many programs outside of mobile apps. And I've also just haven't really done much game hacking before, so I thought it was a really cool little challenge to go through. And again, reminder, all these challenges from the event from this year are still available. You can go check them out if you want to, and you can go back and look at previous years too. But let me know if you completed the event this year, and if you did, what was your favorite challenge? But that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of it, and I hope I'll see you in the next one.